and here is Mist. She is seven years old. She's probably going to get tied up because it's pretty hard to do a show with the dolls that we're sharing, surprisingly. Now, the reason that I'm wearing these is so that I can feel where I'm stepping. For me, sharing a sheep, it's a little bit like dancing with a sheep. I have to remember what foot comes next. Um, and with these on, I can try to stop myself stepping on the sheep. I don't want to step on the sheep. I really need to know where my feet are. It also means that if the sheep's about to try and wriggle and get away, away from me, I can kind of feel it clench my legs a little bit tighter. So that's why I'm wearing these things. Now, I share about, oh, I don't know, total three sheep a day. <laughs> That's, uh, that's enough for me, it's quite hard work, not so much for the ones that we've got behind us, but for me personally, it's probably one of the harder things that I've tried to learn in my life. Um, I finally, I eventually got there. So I share about two or three sheep a day. There was a girl uh, who just uh, won the world record uh, a couple of weekends ago, over the hill here in Garston. She tore 601 sheep in about eight hours. That is incredible. So, um, yeah, to me, sheep cheering is hard, but to these guys and girls that do it, they are athletes of the highest form. I cannot describe how fit and strong these people are. They do earn pretty good money to pay for it. You probably all had a great, 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 great dad somewhere along the line that used to share sheep. He probably used a pair of these. So, these are pretty hard work. I would hate to share an uh, entire sheep. On the bottom here, this is a comb that stays nice and still that glides over the sheep's skin. At the top here, we've got a cutter. That slides back and forth. Now you can see that this comb, that's pretty thin. It's maybe about three or four millimeters thick. That is how much wool we're leaving on the sheep. It's not much at all, but it, um, you kind of, it, you're leaving not so much on there. There's less chance of cutting. <laughs> If you hear any huffing and puffing, it's the sheep, it's definitely not me. So right now, I'm stepping with my right leg here, I'm step stepping right in between Bruce's um, rear legs. Which is fine, he's just a little guy, just a lamb. When you're sharing a ewe that's got big udders, this is when these moccasins come in really important because you don't want to be stepping on those up. Stop. The stock runs back to me. 
They don't make noise when they're working these dogs. Completely different. So she barks, she drives in them, they, she drives the animals away from these. These are all quiet and smart and intelligent and self. They move animals with their gaze and their body position. So that's your two different types of working dog. You can get a dog. Dogs are trained to both whistle and voice commands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you lot decide who I send up the hill, actually. So we've got Mist here is, is quite fast and um, she's seven years old. You can see how desperate she is to work. She has had some work today. Get away. She loves it. So we don't, get away. We don't need to train these dogs with treats or pets or anything thing like that. Their reward is working. They do it because they love it. If anything, we're trying to refrain them from working themselves to death. <laughs> So she's looking back at me for a little bit of reassurance right now, so I'm just going to give her the hurry up whistle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. So a couple of directions on her as well, uh, left and right. Uh, you'll probably figure out what they are. Maybe I can say it quietly. Go by. Is anti clockwise and clear is uh, left or clockwise. Go by! <laughs> What I'm doing at the moment is I'm letting those sheep kind of group up again before she pushes them all into different places. Let her have a little look around, see what they're up to, and then uh, carry on. to get um, Miss to stand between me and the sheep. That's not where she wants to be. It doesn't feel comfortable for her. I'm going to put Miss for a little bit of a test at the moment. So, Myth is a heading dog. Pulls animals towards me. What I'm going to try and get her to do is do uh, what a dog like Jet, a driving dog, should do. And get her to push these sheep up the hill a little bit. Now, the way that I'm going to do that is by tricking her into it. I'm going to send her a little bit stop her before she gets to the head of the sheep and then a little bit right stopping her before she gets to the head of the sheep a little bit of a tic tac motion that's how you can get a very well trained heading dog to push our sheep away from you it's a bit of a painful process but it's a really good challenge for them where stand go by stand where where up where? Where? Go by. Stand. Walk up. Walk up. She doesn't want to walk up behind the sheep uh, and push them away from me. This is making her furious. <laughs> <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end it on a really good note from, from this. This is a working session, a training session. You always end your sessions on a good A good note for her will be bringing the sheep. Now she's back in her element again. Go by. Walk up. Where much they don't really understand how it works. They don't know that they need to go through gateways. Uh, as your sheep uh, grow older and they get more and more used to uh, being worked by dogs, they become easier to deal with. Go by. You are essentially training your sheep or your cattle as well. Go by. Stand. 
extend, go right, extend, go right, good girl, extend, go right, you can see she's trying to do her own thing a little bit there, where? Now the challenge is to see if we can fit them all in the pit. Go by. Oh, there's always one. Walk up. Walk up. Walk up. Walk up. Yeah, get up, get up. Walk up. Wait, 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 wait. Stand. 